I like that you use your backlist as a conversation starter. I think that is pretty huge because also like if you're just sitting in the bar or whatever, you're at a conference and people ask you, you know, what have you written? What are you working on? You know, you can talk about your backlist in that way. Hello, writers and crafters. I'm Valerie Isan. And I'm Eric Mertz. And this is episode 133 of the podcast, and it is October 11th, 2023, as we record this. Today, we are talking about Backlist and how to use it. Uh, we want to first thank our patrons for believing in our work offline and here as well on the podcast. You can go to patreon.com slash Valerie Isan, I-H-S-A-N. And for as low as a dollar a month, you can get a postcard from me, a shout out on the podcast. We can make announcements for you, read out the blurb for your books, those types of things. And in other tiers, the benefits increase free books, accountability calls, scene analysis, mastermind calls, and even writer craft retreat tickets. Become a patron of the arts at patreon.com slash Valerie Isan and patreon.com slash strange air stories for short stories in the paranormal mystery genre. I saw you just dropped another one. Another one. Yeah. And I just, I wrote that. I started writing that one. Like I think after our uh, podcast last week, that <laughs> one wrote just... it in less than a week and just blooped it up. It was, it just, it just came forth fully formed. <laughs> I knew, be, I knew beginning, middle and end. And that was, that is rare. Um, and it's really short. So it, it, um, yeah, it sort of lent itself to, to getting out there quick. So cool. I can't wait to read it. It's a UFO story. Ooh, just in time for creepy October, spooky October. Yeah. Sorry, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's a it's a UFO story. So if you like those, check it out. It's free as well. It's not it's oh. not in it's not in any of the tiers. You can just go on um on my Patreon page and just read it. So your strategy you has been putting a free one out every quarter or something like that. I've put a free one out every quarter. Um, I've seen that Patreon allows you to sort of change the, um, you can change, like you could take a story, put it out to your tiers, and then you can change it for a short period of time and put it, make it free. So I'm going to start, uh, I'm trying to get more people onto Patreon. Mm -hmm. um, I'm using Patreon for more things. And so I'm going to be, I'm going to be using Patreon to, I'm going to be using Patreon as more in more of the book launch. Um, I'm going to host some things there so that when I'm asking people, hey, check out the the free chapter, check out this, check out that. I'm going to put it on Patreon so they're 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 going that way. Oh, that's and I'm also a great gonna make idea. Yeah, I see a lot of authors and a lot of other creators doing that where they've just has essentially sort of used, you know, your website is sort of your big platform, but then this using this as a mini platform mm -hmm. uh, for for those types of things. Um, otherwise you're pushing people into book funnel. You're pushing people sort of way out of your space. Um, I like book funnels pages, but there's no connectedness. So like once someone clicks on your book funnel page, it's great. They're on your book funnel page, but it doesn't go anywhere. At All least right. if they're on Patreon and they're curious, they'll click on, they may click on, oh, Other check things. it out. Free mm -hmm. store. Let's read it. Cool. Hey, I love this story. Let's subscribe. So. <laughs> nice. And now they've changed it so that you can have followers on, on Patreon I too. Saw that. Like you don't yeah, have to even, so I, th you don't even have to pay to be on Patreon. You yeah. can just have followers and then, and I think that would be, I wonder if they're going to try to turn it into sort of like a, not a social media, but, but a place I, where you can have so. followers, you know, and then you can pay or not. And so I think that's actually pretty great. I like your idea because yeah. you're going to have followers on that channel and you can do whatever you want there, videos or, you know, I put the podcast right. episodes up there and, and so you can have engagement that way. And then, yeah, whenever they can just slip right over into the paid tiers if they want to. That's really cool. I like that idea. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Announcements. Um, the early access to the early bird registration is happening now. So if you want access to the writer craft uh, retreat tickets for 2024, those go public um, November 1st. So if you want to get early access to early bird tickets, then um, now is the time to do it. And last year, 
before early bird closed, I had sold out. So just wanted to put that out there in case you wanted to get, get in. That. Um, the new anthology by Tsunami Press is just, you know, it's being printed right now. And so it'll be out as really, really fast. Uh, we've got uh, a pre-order link at tsunamibooks.org. And my SAI contact is in that. And cool. you can pre-order Season of the Shadow right now on Amazon for, that's Eric's new title. And it comes out November 16th. Anything That's else true. you want to announce? No. No. What have you been doing this last week? Well, this is like free write autumn. Right. I think that's mm -hmm. what it's turning into. Um, which I she wrote say, a story. Yeah. <laughs> that's what you did last I week. <laughs> I did. I wrote that story. Um and yeah, like I'm taking this, I'm taking advantage of this as I, I feel like, um, you know, I'm pretty locked in on the series and and know where I, I know where it's going. I know the character arcs and things. And so getting out of just being out of that feels like, you know, like I'm like I'm getting extra playtime. Mm. And that's been missing in this in this creative world. I feel like being locked into the series is great. It feels like business. And I like that feeling. And when I'm writing it, I feel great too. But now like having this this new thing that I've been working on, um, it's like, it's just kind of a novella. It doesn't fit into anything. Um, yeah, it just feels good to be writing something. And it's in a different voice mm. than this, the regular series and, and mm -hmm. the things I put out on Patreon. So it's kind of fun to be in like a more, um, it's in the first person. And it's got like a, a little more of a flowery feel to it. Is it in the same world or is it completely no, different? Just something completely different. Are you going to put just, it up on Patreon or how, what are you going to do with I, it? I don't know what I'm going to do. It'll probably be 25,000 words when it's done. So it's sort of in that donut hole of like, not really a novel, not really a, I don't know what it is. Um, there's a lot of traditional publishers, small presses that are, that are publishing books of this length. Oh. Um, there's, there's not a lot. I wouldn't say a lot but there's a few mm -hmm. and i figure you know why not just maybe spend the early part of next year shopping it um it's just you know just a query letter and and some time and so yeah i think there's there's this one i've got another one i'm going to do for NaNoWriMo that i just sort of plotted out mm -hmm. while on vacation or plotted out just in in sort of odd times and i figure like i'm just going to take some time play with these two things see where they go if they don't if they don't go anywhere then i'll just you know i'll self publish them well i went build a backlist build a backlist i went to the write on the sound yeah writing you did conference that was really nice it was a really good conference i had not heard of it before this year so i highly recommend it it's a sweet little town i want to go back and just sort of explore the downtown a little bit more it's right on the puget sound the venue you could you know if you were out on the dock you could see the Puget Sound from from there um it was really beautiful and um I did two talks um uh, one on the core message of your memoir and one on transforming your manuscript from boring to badass and that both of them were well attended I had 40 to 80 people in both of them oh, wow. and nice. I got 50 new people on my mailing list so that's wow. a bonus for speaking. Yeah. That's, you, that's a if crazy you want to grow number. your mailing list, go speak at a conference. <laughs> I got to meet Jamie Ford. That was kind of my fangirl that's moment. Neat. Yeah, that was really awesome. Um, and I met, you know, some really fun, fun people. I really like them. So I'm going to be following them too. So that really consumed like my whole week, really. Because right. I I drove there Friday. I took a master class from um Catherine Raven, who wrote Fox and I, she's a biologist and, hmm. and a writer too. But, um, so that was cool. It was on a literary nature writing. So I got some cool tips on that. And, and then that was Friday. And then, uh, yeah, the conference was Saturday and Sunday. And then, and then I drove home and was home at like 1130 or something at night. <laughs> Because Edmonds is about five hours away from yeah. us. I guess 
I guess I have the announcement that I'm going to be teaching at Pike Peak Writers in Colorado Springs nice. um, next year. So mm -hmm. when is there... when is the conference? It's April 20. I think it's the last weekend in April. It's jazz up your writing. Um, I'm going to be teaching three different um sections courses during that time so that's excellent what what is the um name of the conference pike the something pike's peak writers conference pike's i keep calling it pike's peak. place because that's the big market in seattle and <laughs> I, i've um, i've been to that market and i've never been to pike's peak so yeah it's pike's peak it's um, colorado springs um, I have it on good authority from friends who know Denver that the, the Denver area that it's beautiful. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, looking forward to that. And that's in April, you said. April, yeah. Okay, April twenty twenty four. This is, it's kind of weird to know what you're going to be doing in it, you know, that far in a, ahead. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen at three o'clock today, but I know what's going to be happening in <laughs> April. So. Excellent. Okay, right on. Let's see. Uh, I think that's all for updates. Um, I'm still reading Slammerkin. I'm almost done with it. Um, and then I've got a lot of other books. Um, there's like three more books I wanted to do for research for the NaNoWriMo project. Um, I am kind of like itching to read some of the new books I got at the conference though. So I'm just sort of I'm not sure if I'll continue because you can be doing research as you're writing too. So I might slip in a couple of others, although I'm doing the, um, <laughs> this is kind of a cheat, but I'm doing Becca Symes 30 for 30 writing, you know, spending uh, 30 right. minutes on your manuscript every day for 30 days and research counts. So I've been reading as my 30 minutes. So I haven't been plotting or anything yet for the NaNoWriMo book. I'm a little bit nervous cheating. about that. It's not Cheater. really cheating, but kind of. Come on, it's cheating. I'm calling Becca right now. <laughs> Tell her what's going on. What are you reading? I am reading, well, I, I I kind of felt like a little odd dropping my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles thing <laughs> last week. So I got serious. Now I've gotten serious. And now I'm reading um, The Most Expensive Mistress in Jefferson County by um, oh, an author. Oh, that's the title. Named, that's the title? That's the name. That's the title, the, the most expensive mistress in Jefferson County. Expensive. By, hold on. The most expensive mistress? Yeah, in Jefferson. In Jefferson. Jefferson County. Okay. Picked it up at the Alaska Writers Guild Conference. It was on the free table by author James Misko, who is the, he was the uh, originator of the Alaska Writers Guild. Um, oh. He was one of these people who like it seems pretty typical for alaska you know he he was in real estate and fishing and he did like a million things and then kind of retired as an author so yeah i wanted to pick up something that's what i love about a conference is you can there's books on those tables that you're just never going to find anywhere else there's zero i had zero trajectory towards this book in any other way but mm -hmm. now that i've been there i i have it uh so i just started it um okay just started it the other day is Misko O E or O W? Um, M I S K O. Oh, M I S K O. And it All seems right. like a he seems like a yeah, but it seems like a small press, and again, which is interesting to me. And um, it deals; it's sort of adjacent to the things I like anyway. It's, it's kind of about land rights and Western mm -hmm. people and all that stuff. So yeah, it should be interesting. All right. So I wanted to know, we were talking a little bit before we hit record um, this morning about our backlists. And I think we both have the same number of published books at this point. I think so. Um, and I don't consider myself really as having a backlist because they're all in different genres. Um, with the exception of the newest memoir that I just published. And so I have two memoirs. But you right. are writing in a series and have since you started, really right. started publishing. So I can I consider you as having more of a backlist than I do. And I I don't know if that's an accurate, you know, statement or or how we should consider backlist. I mean, to me, backlist is really any of your other books that you've published. Right. So I that's do the have dictionary a backlist, definition. But yeah. 
but the way you use it, I don't know how to use mine, I guess is the point. And so I don't consider myself as having one because I don't know how to use it. So yeah, yeah. I'm curious and to see how you use yours and if there's any way I can riff off that and kind of use mine. So just for the sake of definition, you know, your backlist is books that are published that are still in print, which is sort of a traditional publishing concept, you know, a book being in print or out of print um, that have been on the market for at least one year. So it's okay. the stuff that fills the shelves um, in the, in the old bookstore, you know, visual, you, you might have the, the new book turning to face you as you walk into the store, that's the new one. And then there's everything else by that author. Um, and I, and, and just as a side note, it's just in our world where, you know, people, there's a lot of creatives, whatever you're into books, music, movies, there's people and, and all the other arts, like people are creating a lot of stuff and discoverability is, you know, like discovering an author, you might discover that author on their 10th book. You might discover mm -hmm. that, that, that artist you love musically on their fifth album. And so backlist to me is as a, as a consumer of the arts, it's the most exciting prospect of finding something new is that if you like this book book number eight you've now got seven other books you can read or you know albums to listen to so i think that there's this idea that like you you as an author are running on new releases all the time because new releases like tend to be your biggest boom in sales but it's really the backlist that that props all that up and and makes the author thing sustainable because uh, again if you were if you were just surviving on on new releases you'd have like a two month cycle of big sales and then it would you then you'd have nothing so mm -hmm. that backlist is really like the, the you know again it's like the backbone of your author business um so would you say that you use your backlist when you when yes. you're not publishing, I guess. So if you're trying to promote something and you don't have a book coming out soon, like me, I just published right. in March. So the next book is not going to come out for at least another year, I would imagine, by right. the time I write it and revise it and revise it and revise it and <laughs> and then put it out. So. I think you left out a I think you left out a revision. There yeah. You said <laughs> I have one, several two, three, editing four. passes. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 So um likely it will take another year before that comes out. So I could be promoting books in my backlist then is what you're saying. Yeah. And I think you should be because for two reasons and, and, and neither of them, those reasons I'm going to say are, have anything to do with sales. But I think the first one is it keeps people interested in what you're doing. They might've bought that book in March and read it in March and they, they like you, they want, they want more of you. And if you're not putting something new out, you could have this long dormant period with that fan that you're not giving them anything. And you can give them all of the other content, like your podcast or your, you know, pictures from your appearances and all those other things that we do as like the writer's life stuff. And they love that, but nothing satisfies that writer reader covenant quite like another book. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, at least, like, I think that's what it's all aiming towards. Um, and the other thing that it does is I think selfishly, it makes you, it makes me feel, I'm not going to put this on anybody else. They might not feel it, but like it keeps those titles alive and it keeps those parts of the story alive in my head so that when I'm talking about the series to other people, to other writers, to other, you know, to people like when I was in Alaska talking about it to people, like because I've been constantly in conversation in a marketing sense about those books, I'm able to talk about them more like openly. Like I know that I still know the sizzle to those books and and that's hard, that's hard to do. Like we're, mm -hmm. we're human beings. We're like very drawn to the new and shiny and it's easy to get stuck in the new and shiny. Um, so this keeps you in the mode of like, you know, it's that long-term relationship with the book, which I think if you are in this for the long haul, you need to cultivate that long-term relationship. And, you know, just like human relationships, there's like new relationship energy and then there's long-term relationship energy. And I think like, 
having some of that for your backlist is important. The love of the backlist. Yeah, I think just because mm -hmm. it, you know, once it goes away and it's not the new thing, it can, I think you, it, I don't know. I think for a lot of authors, it becomes like less relevant. And I think it's, and it is, it will always be, it's not the new thing anymore. And it's, it's, it's now, it's places now to support the new thing, but you have to use it to, for it to actually support the new thing. So how do you use it? Because I haven't been using mine. So like right now being in sort of book launch mode and I'm, I'm, I'm really terrible at book launch stuff because it's like, it's really hard for me not to focus on writing. Mm -hmm. So like doing all this stuff is, is it's just challenging. It's a challenging change in priorities. So what I end up doing is um, like right now to, there are people on my mailing list. And if I do the math, there are many people on my mailing list that have, that are in one of two categories. They've either downloaded that first free book and they've read it and they're not, that's where that relationship ends. So by, and, and now I'm, so here's the free book, which is kind of book zero. And I'm talking about releasing book three. Um, I need to have some, like, they're not they're They might look at that series and say, well, I've only read this book zero. And I, now he's talking about book three. And, you know, what do I, how do I, you have to lead people to the logical conclusion that they need to buy those two books. Mm -hmm. So what I've been doing is I've been using the Amazon free days, um, putting the book out, one book out free on a weekend, you know, and I'll announce it on my mailing list and say, hey, you've got, you know, this, this weekend, you have this weekend to get this book for free. Or I, I, so that's one way, like, hey, if you want to buy, if you're ready to buy Season of the Shadows and haven't read the other two books, here's your chance to get those things. So it's all pushing people in, you know, into that from that. I've read the freebie, but not the others. So if that's the first place, um, that gets them moving into the series, that gets them into book one, book two, and then into book three. Um, the other thing that I use, use it, use them for is I talk about elements in that, in those books that connect to this book. It's sort of the, if you like this, then you're going to love this. Um, and so it's reminding people who have read it. So now I've, I've addressed the people who haven't read those books. Um, and so it's they, that incentivizes them. Well, the people who've read it, like, Hey, remember this part that you like this part, you know, this person said this about this book. Well, guess what? There's this book is going to be more of that. So it's an opera. It's, it's like, I'm using it to have like introduce the conversation that the third book is going to okay. um, hopefully move the series into. Cool. So you use it to move them into the new book that's coming out after reading the free book and also um, just to keep just to keep introducing that the elements right and like reminding those readers like hey look you've and i'm also that's so like let's say you know in that in that newsletter i'll say look hey remember in in chasing shadows this element and like this thing happened and you're going to find out more about that that incentivizes two readers one who's read that book and liked that book and they're going to say oh well, i i love that part of that book and this is going to take me further into that element of the story. So I'm using the, 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 the I've already read it relationship to, to spur a new sale. Um, and then by bringing up, it, it gives me something to talk about, to introduce the elements that the, the, the whole series lives in. Right. So for, again, for people who've read that only read that zero book who said, yeah, I've read the first one and like, Oh, I didn't know this was in here. Let's you know, let's see how this plays out. Um, so it's it's a first and foremost, I use the backlist as a conversation starter about the series um, to get people incentivized either to buy those books um, or um, to to move into the new one. So it for me, not having a series, um, I could use some of these elements. As a conversation starter, I could talk about elements in, e even if they're standalones, which mine are, 
you can still talk about the elements of one book and that, you know, because a lot of people, even if they're writing standalone, tend to have a, I don't want to say that the themes are all the same, but you do tend to have some elements remain the same. Like, I mean, it just becomes part of your voice, really. I think that's the, that's huge, right? Like if you loved this, you know, we've, we've gotten into that culturally when it comes to art, right? If you loved this, you'll love this. There's mm -hmm. a lot of that. Um, a lot, of, I think a lot of readers and, and in all art are, are just, that's what they're used to finding new things. You're just doing that with your books um, in your, within that. Cause you can't say you've loved this character, get them in the next one, mm -hmm. but you're going to say, if you loved the Regency romance about this, you might like the, the, I don't know, Victorian romance about that. Like it's, I, I I'm, I'm just grasping there, but like, mm -hmm. I think the relationship then is like you said, it's you, you're just connecting the readers to like, this is something I do. You like this, check this one out. And I, I like the way you say that it's, I like that you use your backlist as a conversation starter. I think that is pretty huge because also like if you're just sitting in the bar or whatever, you're at a conference and people ask you, you know, what have you written? What are you working on? You know, you can talk about your backlist in that way. Well, I, I wrote blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And I know you said in a previous episode that that's hard for you to do. Sometimes <laughs> when you put it in the bar scenario, it's super easy, but <laughs> it, it can be hard. What else can people do with their backlist? I mean, you've I said it, what you do and I've said, I don't do anything, <laughs> but I can, well, I I'm there's... looking forward to the conversation starter part, but I just want to have, you know, some good tips in this episode and wondering I what think else. That, well, and that's just a small piece of it. You know, if you're newsletter marketing, that's, that's how to use it. I think it's just to keep them, you know, keep the old books, use the old books to talk about the new books. Um, I think uh, like in a broader sense, it's like, it's an opportunity to, um, and this is kind of from the crafting standpoint, but like, it's an opportunity to like, to, I go back into the, each book, each time I write something and, and try to find elements in it that I might've just buried and use that to develop new story elements that I might bring into. So I really, I, I think if you're looking at your, you, again, the book is not, it's hard for me to think of the book as dead. Like mm -hmm. now that it's out, it's gone. The story's, the story's done. So the way I rectify that is I'll go in and read it and say, and look at it and say, okay, well, there's this little thread, this little thing in this world that I didn't follow it's, it's not that I didn't follow through in the book, but like there's more here. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the seeds of things that I'm putting out in, in on Patreon, um, I've actually got two short stories in this world that, that I'm just going to put out as freebies um, that link different books. They're like sort of what happens in between the books, um, small things. Those all come from backlist, just exploration. Like, oh, right mm -hmm. there. I did suggest that this was out there. Now let's take that and, and and explore that even bigger. Um, I think fan service is just a big deal, especially if you're in a series. If people like your world, I think then like expanding on the backlist, again, not necessarily just project, you know, projecting forward um into next book, next book, next book, but, but maybe wider. finding mm -hmm. yeah, finding other things in there and saying, like, hey, there, you know, remember this scene from this book? Well, here's a short story that addresses some of what happened here. Mm, and I like that too. I, I don't know. Like, I think that, I think backlist is, it's fun because it's, and it's your biggest tool marketing, you know, it's, so it's instead of marketing with ads and things, I was just having this conversation yesterday I, with another author. It was about like, not always wanting everything to be contingent on how many ads I'm running. How many ads I'm running? How many ads I'm running? And I think if you're you know, having conversations about your backlist, it's that relationship is fan service. That's the better way, I think, to build your sales is through like making fans happy, building building fan base. Um, if you're only putting out that new book and only talking about that, I think you're creating distance between your your fans. 
mm. you and your fans and your stories mm-hmm. and your fans. Um, and thinking again, like thinking going wider, um, you know, I've been looking at chasing shadows, the, the most recent book, which will not be the most recent book next month. And, um, you know, there's a character in that who's becomes Melville's sidekick. Um, and I ended up writing a, basically a book about his backstory, just like where he, how he, how he ended up in Canyon County, that kind of thing. Like it's using the backlist to grow wide. And that's mm-hmm. your term. And I think it's a great one. So um, you can't always go long. So speaking about <clears throat> that, that going wider, you know, picking something from, from the backlist and and writing about that. I've seen this late, late, I don't know if this is a, a trend that's just come up in the last couple of years, but I have been noticing that there's still series, you know, like, it, especially if it's contingent upon um, the forward trajectory of the story, like there is book one, there is book two, there is book three. But also I've seen um, other people, instead of doing book one, book two, book three, it's like, you know, the Steve McPherson series, you know, or a Canyon County book, right? a Canyon County, County novel, a story, you know, so it's, it's allowing you to, to deviate from the the linear trajectory i and, wonder and I what think, you think about that i mean that's off the topic I think of that's, backlist but no i think it's actually adjacent to the topic of backlist and that it's an attempt to when i say an attempt i'm not in no way like pointing down at it like i'm not hitting down at anything i just think that it's like it's an attempt to make to take that, like I, like I said earlier, like, right, if you put out book, you've got that free seeker, they've, they've downloaded the first book, and hopefully they've read it. And then they look up at the series and say, Oh, wow, they're on they're they're talking about book four, three, five. Um, and I'm only on book zero. It, you know, they need to be led, right? Mm-hmm. Not, and not every reader is going to intuitively just go buy your entire backlist and then fill the gap and then and catch up to you, even though they're out there. And I love you. Um, <laughs> I love you when you do that. Um, <laughs> and actually, I just had somebody do that recently. And they told me that like, oh, hey, I, I, I'm i going to get these other books. And I could see them. I could see the page reads, on, mm-hmm. on, um, which was kind of satisfying. I think that's an attempt to make all the books in the series equally relevant and mm. to eliminate that sort of, it, it's still in a publishing sense, backlist because it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's in print and it's been out for over a year. But it's also like there is no barrier between book zero and book five. Yeah. They're all in this world and they're, and if, you know, you, that's, that's so what true I'm because gonna... sometimes I get these, you know, like book bub lists or Libro FM or something like that, where um, what they're releasing is book eight in the series. And I just click over that, like blank, blank, blank. I'm skipping it because I haven't read any of the others. So even though it sounds interesting, I'm skipping it because. I don't want to have to catch up. So if it were just a book in this world, that would be more, I would be more likely to buy that. Right. I can see that totally. I get what you're saying. And so I'm going to have this, you know, I think the series for me, you know, the series trajectory will continue. However, I am looking at every opportunity to create books in the world so that there's to cre- to cultivate some of that like these are all mysteries that take place in the in a similar place in a similar time it's not going to be your main the protagonist you're used to but if you like the world here's another sliver of it and i don't know i think that's satisfying i think I, I, fantasy I, authors authors do this well and i think everyone can take a page out of the book i was just going to say terry pratchett wrote several series but they're all in the disc world you know, this is a Discworld book. This is a Discworld book. So you can, and I right. can see that happening with Canyon County. This is a Canyon yeah. County book. And this is book four in the Strange Air series. Right, right. But, but you can have, then it's almost like multiple series happening at the same time. 
you've got some standalone books and you've got a series, but they're all in the same world. And this all goes back to sort of the core conversation about like you're building, you're, you're finding fans, you're finding people that like what you do. And it's less about marketing to the world at large and more marketing to the people that like what you're doing. And there's, and that sounds like, I think a lot of people will hear that or a lot of people, and that message is out there from more than just us. But like, if when people hear that, I think that it, it can stop some people in their tracks because it feels limiting. Like what? I can't, I'm not trying to get every mystery or fantasy author in the world onto my series. What? Um, you're getting as many as you can, but really like you're building a tribe of readers. And if you can find that group of people that love what you do, then you get to do these things successfully. And mm -hmm. yeah. And who was it that said a billion years ago about the thousand true fans? I don't remember. I don't remember said that, but yeah, if you've got a thousand people that love your work and buy everything that you put out, then every book that you release, you've got at least a thousand sales right. for that one book. And you know, that's a nice little chunk of change. It's not maybe yeah, nice. bestseller, but you know, it'll get the ball moving for sure. I would like to have a thousand people buy my book. I think that's the that's the joy of self-publishing. That's the joy of the publishing world the way it is. Yes, we could all sit here and talk about how back in the day there were a lot of publishers and they published your books and they marketed them and you as a writer could just ship. You know the old movie where like the writer gets done and then he puts the manuscript, or he or she, well, it's usually a he, so let, let's be honest. Like in the movie, we'll put the manuscript into an envelope and send it to an editor and then he walks away and goes... I don't know, hunting or something, right? Uh -huh. It's like this author's life is just finishing the manuscript and handing it off and that's it. <laughs> I mean, we could all bemoan those days because they're not there anymore. And that's, mm -hmm. that's. but if you're going to look at it in this way, like I think that's the joy of it. Find Find the people that love what you do and satisfy them. And I mean, I was just talking to Zach Godfrey the other day. We had an, a conversation post- um, post podcast. And it was like, that's his whole thing. Like I'm finding the people that love what I do in the places where they are. And the ads are sort of irrelevant. I mean, they help, but like, it's more important to build those, just build those people that love what you do. I'm going to go back to ads for just a second, because you were saying that you use the free Amazon days. So that means you are exclusive to Amazon. So at the moment, for the moment. So if you are a wide author, you could still do the same thing. You just don't have the free days on Amazon, but you can still do book promos where you, you know, change your price and you can do it. Um, so if you're on, like I get emails from draft to digital and, um, you know, that says, Hey, overdrive's having a sale or Kobo is having a sale, or, you know, you've got all these promo opportunities. And if your book fits that genre that they're going to be promoting, then you can get promo deals for, you know, making your book on sale. So you can drop it down to 99 cents or even free, whatever, um, for that like week that they're having the sale or whatever. So you can still, I don't want to use the word artificially, but like you can, if you're not exclusive to Amazon, then you can create your own like promo sort of like program, I guess. Yeah. It's a little more, I mean, you have a wider, you have, you have more bookshelves, more bookstores you're in. So you can, you certainly have more opportunities to reach readers. And we all know that that number that percentage of market share that Amazon allegedly has is shrinking all the time because there's just more players mm -hmm. um, in the, in the game. Um, but yeah, you can certainly manufacture, I guess that's the word I would think of. Like you yeah. can certainly manufacture your own free days, your own 99 cent days. It's just how much hands-on do you want to be with your, with your product? And I think that's part of just what you do with the backlist. Again, the book can sit there dormant, um, and look, I'm not talking, you know, crummy on ads. Like if you, if you found the ad sauce that gets you, you know, 10 sales of a book a day and you're only paying, you know, five bucks for it. Great. You've really done it. That's you. That's another way to use your backlist, figure out how to run ads to them 
get readers to read them and they'll make, they'll turn a regular profit. Like there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but beyond ads, like how to handle it, you know? Yeah. You gotta, you, you, you gotta use those free days. You've got to use those 99 cent incentives to, to keep, to keep them moving. They are what drives the next book. Another thing you could do to promote backlist things, uh, titles is to, uh, re-release or not re-release, but, um, yeah, if you're going to re-release, like if you put a new cover on, on something, you can get new attention on it. Or, um, like if you yeah. have a nonfiction title and you, um, decide to put out a workbook edition for it, you can then be driving like, Hey, I'm just putting out this workbook. If you haven't purchased the, the main book here, here's the link for that. Or I've got that one on sale now. So that when the workbook comes out, it'll be, you know what I mean? Like you can create, yeah. you can, or um, I don't have any audiobooks right now, but that's my next, you know, backlist thing I want to do. I want to go back through and create an audiobook for all of the books that are already published. So by doing that, that's going to give me new releases, which then can maybe call attention to that backlist. Since they're right. standalones, you know what I mean? I'm just trying to find other ways to connect. Like if I put out the backlist or if I put out an audiobook for Small the Blue Sky, that was my first book. It's, you know, as you say, kind of it's been dormant really <laughs> for a while right. because I mean people are still buying it, but I can get more eyes on it, more attention on it if I, you know, like I said, release the the audiobook or release a large print edition of it or something like that, you know, that would bring more attention back to that older book. And that's why I think authors will do like are wise to do those sort of big release. Like if you're going to release your book in all those formats, um, if that's your long-term plan, you're going to do the ebook, the print book, the, you know, you're going to do all that other stuff, mm -hmm. um, audio book. I think it's wise just to, to, to bleed that out incrementally, you know, mm -hmm. just to come out with it little by little by little, um, so that you're always having something to talk about and and using treating each one of those like a mini release so that you're um you're constantly bringing attention to what you're what is on your list in total. I like the idea of having it all released at the same time so that people have any format that they want to buy it. And so I can develop, I think, more interest, more excitement about it. Oh, yeah, you know, the audiobook's coming out. I can't wait to get that. But I like your mindset. It makes me feel better about not releasing them all out at the same time. Like it gives me permission to not have that accomplished yet. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I meant to dribble it out. <laughs> it, it, that's partly how I tell myself like, the fact that I just, <laughs> okay. I can't, I can't focus on doing, you know, all of it at once that I have to do it incrementally. That's how I tell myself it's work, why it works. It's like, <laughs> Uh, here's what actually that means. So I think the first step is built. You got to build the backlist and it has to be viable. And then I think at that point, you know, like most things we talk about, it's, it's like, it's sort of your, your process, what makes the most sense for you mm -hmm. um, is going to, you can do a hundred things with your backlist. You can't do, you're not going to do a hundred though. You need to figure out what works in your for your system. Like I like using it. I like you, playing with it and handing it out little by little and, and trickling readers in with it. Um, you know, some people just might view it strictly as, as ad content, you know, just like, this is something I can use to build a bridge to new releases via ads. It's that's a perfectly fine. If it works, that's all that matters. Use it the way it makes sense for you. I like that. Yeah, I think yeah, that's a that good, is. like, bow at the end of the episode tied up. <laughs> tied up we did it cool i i'm really happy that i got to talk to you about this because it's giving Absolutely. me some ideas about how to you know i haven't even because because i don't have the backlist that's what i keep telling myself but you know according to the definition i do have backlist and now i've got some ideas on how to use it but i haven't been doing ads because it didn't seem like there would be enough ROI. Like I only have one novel out right now. So I'm not going to put an ad on this one book because there's no other novels to buy after that. I have two right. memoirs now. So maybe I could start thinking about doing that, especially after the 
I don't know. I think three is kind of the magic number personally, but I have heard that three is the thing. It's probably the beginning of break even on well. Con if the series works, if you're doing your ads right, three books is the break even. That's what I've read because mm -hmm. then you've got your, you know, your discounted book. Break even one, on, on ads. On ads. Yeah. That's your break even point on ads. All right. Well, cool. guess what book this is for me? It's number three. So like that's, <laughs> if you want to know what's coming next, it's going to be ads. <laughs> that's another episode. <laughs> it's a whole nother episode and a whole nother therapy session. Cause I'm sure that of all the things I do will lead to the most, you know, awful, <laughs> like self-doubt. I'm a life and business coach for creatives. <laughs> you can always check in. <laughs> we can do a session on ads. What did we talk about? Like me at a bar? That'll just be me at some, like now I'm in like in a rural town. I'll just be sitting at some rural town talking about like, yeah, Amazon ads, man. It's real tough <laughs> to some person that probably bartender. works. Yeah. Some bartender or some person that actually works like a hard job. And they're going to be like, Amazon ads. <laughs> really? <laughs> Is that really what we're talking about here? This used to be a mill town. <laughs> <laughs> oh, We'll have a wonderful week writing and he probably will just be like pumping out all these short stories and have fun with your off off script writing. I don't know what Thank to call you. it. Out of, out of world writing. Out of world. I, I'm Yeah, it's way out of world. Thank cool. you. I can't wait to to read all your stuff. I really like you as a writer. Thank as you. As a person Thank too, you. but I mean, I, oh I like your writing. I'm blushing. Blushing. Even though my background is blurred. <laughs> <laughs> have a great week eric you too bye-bye